Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back for some more 47 amp fun. This time we're going to be getting the transformer iron bolted down and the holes drilled and all that fun stuff. Well, maybe not bolted down. We may wait to bolt this stuff down until we have the tube socket holes punched. But what I did do what I pointed out earlier I was going to do. This is a multi-tap transformer and I took the four wires that I'm not going to be using and I put heat shrink, folded them over, then put heat shrink over that on the four non-used wires and I cut them not super short but pretty short because I know I'm never going to be using them and I stuffed them inside the bell so we only have these four wires that we're going to be using going inside the transformer itself just to keep the wiring a little cleaner we're definitely going to be using this whole bundle so it's got to go through so we're going to have two different size grommets and then a different size grommet for this so I'm going to get all this laid out get this stuff ready to install then we can start punching the tube socket holes and then figure out how we're going to lay out the wiring inside so hopefully y'all are enjoying this build i'm really excited about it i think this is going to be a really cool looking amp when i'm done with it so let's get back to the build okay now we're ready to drill the holes for the grommets for the output transformers and first thing i did was i came in and I measured inside edge of all these holes and they're exactly 70 millimeters. So we came back and set this at 35 millimeters and came in and marked from both edges, make sure it's centered and marked our hole there. And we did make sure that this hole needs to be in the center of these two. Sometimes the output transformers, this little hole in the bell will be off center. So make sure you check that and don't assume that it's centered. The other thing we did is I looked at where this hole needs to be in relation to this. And let me zoom in here. And if you look, if you take the center of this hole here and come out, we need to come out this way a couple of millimeters to center this hole. So I took this tool that we used to mark these holes and added two millimeters. And now we're going to come in here and mark like that. And like that and then I think it was let's see what this measurement here was I think it was 15 millimeters it was 25 millimeters so we want to subtract two millimeters from that measurement and mark these inside holes Okay, and then we're going to get our little scribe tool. Mark that. And these aren't quite as critical as doing the mounting holes. Since this is a nice chassis, we want to get this stuff as close as we absolutely can we kind of missed marking that one there we go so we got that mark, that mark, this mark, this mark we're going to come in with a center punch and actually I just want to double, double check this It's 26 on this, so it'll be 25 on that tool because it's a millimeter off. 
So we come in two millimeters. Yep. Perfect. One of these days I'm going to break down and buy a nice one of those scribe tools because they are very handy. But that little cheap one I bought on Amazon is, like I said, it's off one millimeter. And there's no way to adjust it to make it right. And you would think if they make a tool like this and do all these lines and go to that much trouble, they would machine where this little peg is accurately, but they didn't. <sighs> it's what... That's what happens when you buy some of these discount tools and you have to live with the consequences. So I'm going to drill my pilot hole. And we'll probably step this up a couple of drill sizes. And I know a lot of you guys use step drills for this stuff. And I've had people give me flack for not using step drills. And I just like using standard drill bits and I've got a nice set of them so why shouldn't I use them right yeah, that bits nice just as I say that I got a bit that's not sharp. Okay. Draw this one out here. See what kind of hole we need for that. And I'm going to drill it a little small. And then if I have to, I can come back and open it up a little bit. Because you can always drill something bigger, but you can't come back and undrill it. So it's always safer to start with a smaller bit and ease up into the size that you're actually going to need. see it but I'm bracing the top of the drill against my body so that it can't wiggle around while it's using this bigger bit okay now the other thing that we want to do is come back with a larger drill bit and bevel off the edges of these holes
but especially these holes that the grommets are going through. If you don't bevel them, you'll never get the grommet to go through them. And we'll end up cutting the grommet. And then these grommet holes don't push down very hard with this larger bit. You do not want it to like dig in. You just want to barely chamfer the edge of it. The other thing is really pay attention when you're doing this kind of work because you don't want to mess up and be like come back and drill like this hole for the grommet because <laughs> obviously that would totally ruin the top plate of the chassis. So let's see if these grommets will go in here. That hole is not quite big enough. Yep, we need to drill that up the next size up. Mother. So we're going to go up one drill bit size at a time until we feel like we get this grommet hole the size we want. These grommets I've got were really made for a thinner piece of metal than this. So it's gonna be a struggle to get them to work with this anyway. And I'm trying to decide, I may go to the hardware store tomorrow and try to find some more appropriate grommets if I can't get these to cooperate. Like I said, these were, these were made for more like sheet metal, the gap between the two halves of the grommet. A little bit of a fight. No, I think that works okay. Now one thing, when it's in a hole this tight though, the center of the hole may be too small for these wires to go through because it's, it's pushing in from the sides. So let's see if that's the case. I think those four wires will go through, but I'm not sure that that bundle will. No, nope, that's too tight. I'm going to go ahead and drill it out one, one size larger. It'll make it easier to put the grommets in. And it won't be such a tight squeeze on the other wires going through either. Okay. I'm going to come back and bevel these off again since we went with a little bigger hole. And then I think we're going to be done with having the output transformers ready to mount. And unlike on the steel chassis, I don't really feel a need to come back and paint these holes where I've drilled because it's not going to rust. So that's something you don't have to deal with with an aluminum chassis. And let's see if this grommet goes in any easier this time. Oh yeah. Much better. And then you have to come over usually have to get my fingernail and kind of pull up the edges of the grommet. There we go. Just like that. So I'm going to put the rest of these grommets in. And this is probably a good place to stop this video. And we'll come back tomorrow and we will get the holes all drilled to mount the power transformer and the choke. And then I'll be ready to bolt all the iron down and start figuring out where to put all the tube sockets. Okay, so now we're ready to figure out where we're gonna put the power transformer. 
We're going to put it over here in this corner and we're going to have the AC wires going this way. And like I've done on many of my amps, I'm going to put a just an on off switch here in the back corner and have the IC connector. Thank goodness was already drilled out and installed on this chassis for me. So I don't have to deal with that, which was nice. So we want to make sure once again that we honor this lip that's on the inside of the chassis underneath this plate. So we're going to come in 1.1 inches and make sure that that's where these tabs are at. Then we're going to ensure we're not going to have any interference problems. So we go through and make sure all these are in the right spot. And then came in with this tool and measured off from the lip to the center. Well, actually, it would be this way. From the lip to the center of this thing and then came in and marked and did the same way from this edge to each of these points. And that way, you can see I've marked this and this. And the only two I have left to do is to mark this distance like that and this distance like that. And so I've got all my X's marked here. And then the next thing to do is just like we did on these other holes, going to come in with the center punch, center punch these holes. Drill them out for the screws we're going to be using to hold the transformer down. I did do like I was telling you earlier. I took some of these wires that I'm not going to be using for our application. And he trunk them off and stuffed them up inside the bell. So we're going to have a smaller grommet on this side. A larger grommet on this side. And on this transformer, the center of these slots is the same hole that the grommet's going to go through. So we can go ahead and use this same distance from this edge and from this edge centered between these to, to drill our grommet holes and install our two grommets. And, you know, I don't want to waste a bunch of video time doing redundant stuff. The choke's going to be mounted the exact same way using the same process to put it up here in this front corner. And I like getting the choke as far away from the power transformer as I can. One of the reasons is that we are orienting the power transformer at 90 degrees to the output transformers. They're going to be sitting like this. This is going to be sitting like this. So the flux out of the power transformer is going to be going in this direction. And we don't want that getting introduced into our choke. And so like I said, I want to put it up here as far away as I can. And it's just kind of how I've been doing all my amps. And I never had any hum or noise issues out of them. So I'm going to continue doing that style layout. So I'm going to get all these done get the iron ready to get bolted down and I think we'll wrap this up in the next video showing you how to punch out the tube socket holes where we're going to put all the tubes and then start looking at the inside and how we're going to lay out all the parts on the inside of the amp so let's wrap this up here well here we go we got all the holes drilled for the mounting the iron, we got the grommet holes drilled, we got the grommets installed, got a nice layout. I know this is going to look really nice. I think we got the output transformers in a nice place where the tubes are going to really be laid out nice for, you know, for show as well as the way they're going to sound and for isolating the input tubes away from the AC and all that fun stuff. So we are going to be running AC heaters on all these tubes, so we have to be really careful with how we get that laid out. And we are going to also be using these output tubes as fixed bias. And so this will be my first 
foray into doing a fixed bias amp so that'll be fun and I am going to have to install some of these inside the chassis and I think these are going to be the filament transformers for the 47 tubes and they are center tap two and a half volt so plan on pulling the signal off the center tap or the ground for the signal which will go through a small resistor for setting the bias, but we'll get all into that later. And I'm gonna put a couple of these like this, but I wanna leave enough room to put one more up here in the front in case we need to use it for the 56 tubes if we end up going that route. So I think this will help keep all the AC over here on this side of the amp, and that's our whole goal is to separate the AC noisy power from the signal. And I'm probably going to do my normal RCA jacks in the side, volume control in the front, power switch in the back corner, IEC connector back here, and then I'm also going to go into detail about my grounding scheme that I use in my tube amps. I've seen a lot of people talking online about how you know, you can't hook safety grounds up to tube amps because you'll create ground loops and they'll hum. Guys, I don't know why exactly, but I've never had that issue. And I've run a safety grounded phono stage into a safety grounded preamp into a safety grounded amplifier, which should be like just death hum. And I get none. And I have to think it's because of the way that I ground my amps and the grounding scheme that I use. So I'm going to go over that in detail when we get to the power supply and start figuring out where we're going to hook the grounds up and lay out the grounding scheme. So that could be applicable to any amplifier. So really excited. I think this is going to be super fun. Hope you're enjoying it too. Hey Dolly. And if you're enjoying my series, Please sub to the channel, please like the video, and I'll see y'all real soon as we jump back into more 47 Globe Tube Amp fun. Have a great day.